2023 Annual State of the Schools Address. My name is Ashley Gilhausen. I am the school board chair and the representative for District 5 here in Clay County. This evening, we are gathered here to shine a light on the accomplishments, celebrations, and upcoming goals for Clay County District Schools. We know the past two years have seen their fair share of challenges in navigating school operations, but here in Clay County, we continue to work together as a team and have seen tremendous growth, resilience, and educational gains within our schools. Tonight, Superintendent David Broski will provide an overview of the school district and our accomplishments over the past several years, review the current work of our new strategic plan, and share how every stakeholder, parent, and community member can become an instrumental part of our public education system here in Clay County. Before we begin, I would like to ask board member Beth Clark, who represents District 3, to please come forward and provide us with the invocation for the evening. Please stand. Father God, we thank you for all the blessings you have given us. Blessings we sometimes forget, including our freedom. Keep us mindful to always pray for our nation, to restore integrity and excellence, especially in our schools. I pray that we see and never forget the value of teaching our children the virtue of being good citizens, to not only live for the good of the individual, but for the good of others. As a school district, our plate is full, Lord. We need your help. May our leaders never forget to look to you for wisdom and guidance, from safety to meeting our students' needs, both morally and intellectually. We have a heavy task at hand. Let us not lose hope, knowing in you all things are possible. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite board member Aaron Skipper from District 1 to lead us in the presentation of colors and the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Tonight's presentation of colors is presented by ROTC uh, cadets at Clay High under the direction of Commander John Dalton, retired U.S. Navy. Please stand forward. March. <coughs> Colors. Old. Left turn. March. Colors. Old. Present. Colors. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Carry. Colors. Ready. Cut. Left turn. March. <coughs> Forward. March. Colors. Oh. Order. Colors. You may be seated. <coughs> Please welcome next onto the stage school board member Michelle Hansen from District 4. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Skipper. We are excited to see a packed room tonight as we come together as a community to celebrate and dive deeper into understanding the outstanding work that is happening within Clay County District Schools. Tonight, I would like to recognize some esteemed guests and officials that are joining us. Please stand when introduced. Former Superintendent of Schools for Clay County District Schools, Mr. David Owen.
Mr. Ben Wortham. And I would like to now introduce our elected officials that we are honored to have here tonight. Senator Jennifer Bradley. House of Representatives Sam Harrison's legislative aide, Courtney Hurd. Representative for U.S. Representative Aaron Bean, Mr. Brian Campbell. Mr. Tracy Drake, Clay County Property Appraiser. <laughs> Ms. Diane Hutchings, Clay County Tax Collector. <laughs> Ms. Susanna Thompson, Orange Park Councilwoman. <laughs> Ms. Connie Butler, Green Coast Springs Councilwoman. And Mr. Matt Johnson, Green Coast Springs Mayor. <laughs> if you are an elected official and we have not publicly mentioned you by name, please go ahead and stand so we may acknowledge your presence tonight. <laughs> I would like to now turn it over to School Board Vice Chair Mary Bola, who represents District 2, who will now introduce the Superintendents of Schools. Thank you, Ms. Hanson, and it's great to see all of you here this evening. David Roski has had a long and distinguished 33-year career with Clay County District Schools. He began his career in 1989 as a teacher and coach at Lakeside Junior High. Do we have any cheers from Lakeside? <laughs> from there, he became an assistant principal at Clay High. <laughs> Mr. Roski continued to progress in his career as he became principal at Orange Park Junior High, <laughs> Middlebury High, <laughs> and Oak <Oakley> High. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Roski, I was getting the crowd cheering. <laughs> Through his leadership, each of these schools rose to an A ranking, as recognized by the state of Florida. In 2015, Mr. Brasky was selected to become the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. And then in March of 2020, he was appointed by Governor DeSantis to lead Clay County Schools. This was one week prior to the worldwide pandemic and the closure of schools in Florida and the country. Through his steady and consistent leadership, Clay County Schools came out of the pandemic as an A-rated top 10 school district. I was able to skillfully navigate the unique challenges presented during these unprecedented times. In November of 2020, he was elected by the citizens of Clay County. Clay County Schools is a better place because of him. It is truly my pleasure to introduce our Superintendent of Schools, Mr. David Vosky. You know, the, uh, the funny part is, you know, that resume and all that, all that means I can't really keep a job. <laughs> I got listening to that, it's like eight, and it was like, hey, this school, that school. So, to be truthful, I've had nine jobs in Clay County Schools, and it's been a pleasure to serve in each of those capacities. And it's my pleasure to be superintendent and to be here today. And one of the things I marveled at was in the hallway, that was kind of, it was kind of like a party right before we started and all came in here. That's because in Clay County, our school system is important, it's important to our, to our stability as a county. It's important that we celebrate the things that our school system has accomplished always looking towards the future and always looking towards improvement. I'm always reminded that it takes a whole team of people in order to have a great school system. It certainly takes elected officials and those people that pass legislation, we're thankful for that. It takes the school board working together as a team, always keeping our eye on students, which are our primary purpose. It takes teachers, administrators, support personnel, 
and everybody that just has a sincere interest in students, them all working together. I also see our business partners. You know, schools don't operate in a vacuum or in isolation. We operate within a community, within the Clay County community, and I see our business partners over there. I see so many, I was going to start naming, but the problem with naming <laughs> is inevitably you kind of get lost in the naming process, but so many folks to thank. Uh, last but not least, how about this group over here? Students, that's, that's the superintendent student advisory council, some of them. Let me tell you, the sharpest group of students I've been around, those students are going to be our bosses at some point. Super, super great group. We enjoy our meetings and, and give students a voice in their educational experience. And so it's outstanding that they're here today. Also want to recognize uh, uh, Mr. Owens, Mr. Worth. You know, uh, you know, as a young man, you know, somebody has to take a chance on you when you go for a job, right? And ultimately, somebody has to make the decision, yeah, I'm going to hire that guy. And uh, just being a young man and, and look for directions, it was actually Miss Miss uh, Wiggins that gave me my first teaching job. Okay, Mr. Owens gave me my first admin job. Okay, and it was Mr. Worthen that gave me my last principalship. So I'm thankful to, to all three of those folks for what they've done for me and my family. I also want to take the time to recognize Blue Broncos. Miss Hendricks, fifth grade, uh, fifth period students made these flowers, their horticulture uh, department there. Those of you that had the refreshments, they were sponsored by Herb Jones, and the food was prepared by Badman Learning Center, Mr. Scopettis, who is their teacher of the year and their culinary teacher from Badman Learning Center. Let's give them all round. I'd also like to recognize my family that's here this evening. Sue's parents, John and Nancy Ring, uh, up front. Let me just say, last but not least, and certainly first in my heart, anybody that knows, <laughs> Sue Brodsky. <laughs> I'm just going to, if you really want to know who runs the show, <laughs> look, look no further than, than Sue. You know, people have asked, why is it that you have a, a state of the schools address? I had to go some simple reasons as to why we do this uh, each year. One, because public education is important. We should never lose sight of that. We should never back down from, from that statement. Public education is the great equalizer in society. It enables those that come from difficult life circumstances to rise above those circumstances and become whatever they want to be. I can just tell you, as uh, the number nine child of a family of ten, from very humble circumstances, it was education that got me to where I am now, was my ticket out of that, and I'm so grateful for that. But when I look around, I see education in, in a different light. I look out there and I see all of you in the Clay County community. And I see those that have had the opportunity to serve Clay County and were educated right here in Clay County. So when I look out, I see folks like our great Sheriff Michelle Cook, graduate of Clay High School, right there. I see Mr. Brent, former Senator Bradley, another Clay High School uh, individual. I see Erin Skipper, Middlebury High School. I was happy her principal, she was a good student. <laughs> Never got into any trouble. That's been reported. Any I never got to look, look for that. We have Miss Gilhouse, who was a student at Clay High School when I was there. My, my whole point is this Clay County is a community, and our educational system is the reason why, or one of the reasons why, this is a great community. Just because my curiosity is peaked. If you graduated from a Clay County school, if you would just stand up. You know, I was wondering how many people that would be. I'm actually impressed. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, I'm going to test this, this audience out and see if you can follow the direction. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, keep your hands up when I finish the statement. Uh, before, 
after. Notice the way I used to teach you technique. How many of you either know somebody who works in Clay County Schools, knows a student in Clay County Schools, or knows somebody who graduated from Clay County Schools? Now is the appropriate time to raise your hand. Folks, take a look around. Okay, this is the reason why Clay County is great. You know, one of the reasons why is our school system. And the last point that I would simply make is that Clay County is the largest employer. So people always marvel when I make this statement. I always say, if you were to add every other governmental agency's employees together into one pool, right? If you took all of parks and recreation, if you took all of animal control, if you took all of the sheriff's, the sheriff's office, uh, Orange Park Police, Greenfield Police, and you added all of those people together, it's still less than the number of people who work in Clay County school systems. Clay County Schools is the very fabric of our community. So if you're asking why are we here today, we're here to celebrate that very fact. And so I'm so thankful that you're here. I know you got so many other places you could be this evening, and you're thinking, is he really going to talk for that long? Well, the answer is they're picking us out at 7.30, <laughs> so you need not fear how long I'm supposed to be talking to you, okay? I'm going to give some, this evening I'm going to give several department highlights, and I'm going to move quickly through it, because I do have a lot of information, I have a lot that I'm very proud of, but I'm going to point out that Clay County Schools is kind of a, a big and complex operation. Right now, all kinds of things are happening. We've got uh, $65 million worth of construction going on right now within our school district. We transport students, how about this, 3.2 million miles, 3.2 million miles on buses each and every year. That's 128 times around the earth, all from Clay County. Right, we, we said we were the center of the universe. <laughs> 5.6 million meals served in a year. So I'm telling you, there's a lot going on. You know, sometimes I'll be driving down the road and I'll, I'll see a bus go down, uh, go down the road and think to myself, am I really in charge of all of that? <laughs> like it's kind of, a, it's an awesome and daunting task when you think of it. I'm gonna spend uh, a good share of my time talking about teaching and learning, which is my passion, and the reason why we exist as an organization. You know, whenever people get a little bit uh, testy or whatnot, and they come to me, I, I often say, you know, Clay County Schools wasn't invented for us to have jobs. But it's really invented for students, and that's really the primary reason why we exist. And people get taken back when they say, like, they're aghast that I say that, but I say that routinely. I say, hey, this isn't for us to have a job, this is for students to excel, okay? In order to be a, a successful school district, you have to do two things and you have to do them well. You have to care for students. Parents send their children to us. That is an awesome, awesome responsibility. And just remember, students don't care what you know until they know that you care. All right, so step one is caring. And we're blessed to have so many people that care about students in, in Clay County Schools, many of them in the room this evening. The second thing is students have to learn. And I know that doesn't sound very popular, right? It sounds very daddish to say it that way. Students have to learn. Okay, it's just that simple. Academic achievement is job one, and learning is not optional in Clay County Schools. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what, what kind of binds it all together, and how do you know that learning is occurring? All right, people have asked, what do you look for when you go into a classroom? How do you know that learning is occurring in a classroom? Well, I look for the things that you see on that chart, right? I look for high expectations if you look at the blue red going around the side. Then I look for good and strong instruction. And good and strong instruction features really four parts. And this is research-based. Student engagement, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how honest this group is too, okay? How many of you have ever been in a class and you faked like you were paying attention. <laughs> Raise your hand. I said an honest group. Okay, some of you were like, we're not recording this, don't worry. <laughs> okay, we're not recording this, don't worry. Okay? We've all done that. We sat in here, we got this blank look on our face, 
and we're not really sure what just happened, right? So that's that's what we call student engagement. That's different from what I call ritual compliance. Most of you are probably good kids, and you did whatever the teacher said, right? You filled out the sheet. You did whatever they told you to do, right? But you really weren't engaged, right? So engagement is to a higher level of learning. That's step one. I, I walk in the room, are students engaged, right? That's step one when you're evaluating the classroom. And two, the second part there is demonstration of understanding, okay? Teachers have to figure out whether students are getting it. And if they're not, they have to change course. Why would you keep going in the same direction if you know it ain't working? That just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So you have to have what's called checks for understanding, which means along the way, you have to check, are students learning? You do that through formative assessments, exit tickets. There's a variety of, of different techniques to make that happen. But I kind of liken it to putting a ladder up onto a wall, climbing to the top of the ladder, and then figuring out your ladder's on the wrong wall. That, that's not good. So in education, we have to figure out early on, is this really working with students? Or do we need to move on to a different path? Right? So that's that's the second principle that we look for. Hey, are we checking to see if they're getting it? Right? Um, I remember I was at Clay High, so this was early on, and this geometry teacher came to me and said, Hey, can you come in and observe me in class? I said, Great, I'll do this. And I said, This will be a real test because my math skills are not good, by the way. Right? That's why we have CFOs and other people in the organization. So I said, you know what? I tell you, if I learn Geometry, I'm going to consider this teacher to be a rock star. So I, as a good student, came in with paper. I sat in the front row. I watched the teacher. I took notes like I was a student. And at the end of the lesson, I actually got it. There was only one problem. When I turned around, I was the only one paying attention. Right? Teaching and learning are two different things. You can teach all you want. The objective is learning. Teaching is just the strategy that you're using to get there, right? So you hear me always talking about teaching and learning. It's two separate things. They aren't the same thing. People sometimes make that mistake. Academic ownership. What academic ownership is, is that the student has to do the work. Anybody have a teacher that just talked the whole time? <laughs> now I was a history teacher, so we're, we're kind of noted for that. We're kind of famous or infamous for that as a history teacher, right? Teachers have to engage, but teachers have to let go of the learning. Students have to work harder than teachers, right? Well, teachers already got their degree. We're trying to get the student to maximize their learning. Uh, the fourth is rigorous tasks. You have to give students tasks that are above their current level. If you know a student is here, why would you possibly give them work that's here? You have to challenge the student, but then you have to scaffold instruction to get the student to reach the new level. That's the whole objective. If you're in there and you're bored because we're not challenging you, then we're not fulfilling our mission, right? So then if there's a culture of learning in the center, which of course we're doing this all with people. We're in the people business, right? These are all people, and they all come differently to us. Now, a good question that people always ask is, I heard what you said. Well, how do you know that that happens? How do you know that that happens? Well, I can tell you how. Because we inspect what we expect. You have to go out and you have to see it. So when you look out there, that might just look like a big fancy graph. But here's what it's what it's saying to you, what it should symbolize to you. You see the number thirteen thousand five seventy four at the time that you know I took the screenshot. That's how many times we've been in classrooms. We record that on a dashboard. How many times did we see those four principles of instruction when we were out there? The beauty of that is that sometimes I hear people say stuff like, hey, you don't know what's going on in classrooms. I think I, I, think I kind of do. <laughs> There's like 14,000 documented times that we've been in classrooms. Okay, we know what's happening in classrooms. I would kind of point out to you that I could tell you, I could tell you the number of times I've been in classroom by school. I see Mr. Boyack 
Oakley High Grade School back there. I can tell you how many times Mr. Boy has walked into a classroom. I can tell you which teachers he's walked. I can tell you the time of day he went there, right? So, so the idea that education just kind of happens and nobody knows, like it's a big myth, is false, right? It's a science to learning. It's not just this willy-nilly guessing that I hear people trying to, to portray. So I, I told you it takes two things. It takes, for grade school, it takes uh, caring about kids and learning, right? What I didn't tell you is that there's an actual science to learn. It just doesn't happen naturally, right? So that, that chart you're probably looking at, you probably can't read it from where you're sitting, but that's just one data point that we would use in analyzing whether or not we're effective. Uh, in today's world, we use data-driven instruction. We use progress monitoring and data to determine student progress. We provide strategic interventions to students, small groups, side by side. It's important to know that not everybody learns the same way. You know, I've got two children, and, and one is very analytical. He enjoys theory, like in the abstract, and that's his thing. And the other one, the exact opposite, hands up. If he doesn't like have a hammer in his hand or something that's physical, he doesn't want to know about it, right? So, so imagine we have 40,000 students. They're all, they all belong and are the most precious uh, thing to, the, to their parents. They all have a different way of learning, and, they're sit, and we're tasked with how do we elevate each and every one of them, right? Well, you do that by using scientific methods that are proven to work. You just don't guess like what a student needs or doesn't need. You have to assess and make that determination. Okay? So what happens if you have a clear vision for instruction, what happens when you monitor student progress, when you use the science of learning to do that, when you alter instruction for that? Well, I would say you have success. That's what happens, okay? Clay County is an A-rated school district. It's one of only 14 in the state of Florida currently, okay? Clay County is in the top 10 in every statistical category invented by DOE. And DOE makes some stuff up, I don't even understand. Okay. We're third in state science, fifth in social studies, ninth in ELA achievement, third uh, in the state for sixth grade overall achievement, first for seventh grade civics. Very proud of it. We're ranked fifth by, by Niche, which is a, a school rating service. We're named academically high performing, which what that is, it's really three things wrapped up in one, because I think you know, DOE makes a bunch of stuff up, but this is one of the things they made up. One is academic achievement. We talked about that. But then also class size. We actually have good class size. I know Ms. Kidwell's probably shaking her head at me. We actually have good class size in Clay County. And the third, is our, our financial practices. We're a financially high-performing district as well as an academically high-performing district. Okay, so those three things make up that distinction. 37 of our schools are A or B schools. And how about this? 95% graduation rate of our traditional high schools, the highest ever. <laughs> Ah, I got a stand go from some, some of that. Okay, <laughs> good. Okay, I'm going to kind of delve into some other topics, but all within instruction. What is school choice? All students have unique needs and interests. Okay, in order to meet those needs, Clay County District Schools has robust school choice options. All secondary schools have accelerated programs, whether it's IB, ACE, Advanced Placement, Collegiate High School. Every Every student has the opportunity to be on an Excel pathway, an Excel track. Over 22,000 potential college credits earned, 506 ACE diplomas, just between Oak Leaf and, and uh, Fleming Island. We've expanded that program to six of our, of our schools now because of the success of it. We also have school choice options for our elementary schools. Many of them have Cambridge, which is the ACE program. Montessori program at Swimming Penn Creek Elementary, 
They're extremely popular. We're looking to expand that to a, to a second site. And Coppergate School of the Arts allows students to explore their interest in the fine arts. As you can see, many, many options for families to choose from in Clay County Schools. So, so when I hear uh, the term school choice, I think of I choose Clay. Right? That's I choose Clay. That's that's my choice. And and so just wanted to point that I'm very proud of the choice options that we get. Uh, one of my favorite areas is CTE, because I often say when students graduate, they have three, three choices, and I call them three E's, enroll, enlist, or employ. Now, I was given a speech at, at a group, and I don't think this person is here, and so I, I, I said, hey, you've got three choices, enroll, enlist, or employ, and he said, incarcerated. <laughs> I'm incarcerated. I said, well, that doesn't begin with an E. He said, oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, I was a rough crowd. You know, I just kind of rolled with it and said, okay, here. incarcerated does not begin with an E. So, so, really, when you think about it, you don't have those three choices in life when you get to the end of high school. Those are, all of us did one of those three things when we got out of high school. Okay? I often hear people say, hey, you should have vocational programs. We, we do. Okay, they're now called career and tech education. We have 34 of them. You see a, a smattering on the screen. We do have vocational type programs, including carpentry, art mechanics, welding. Back in my day, I actually took a metal shop. Metal shop. Love metal shop because I love the metal shop teacher. <laughs> when I was in high school, and I never forgot that. We have about 11,000 students taking CTE courses in Clay, in Clay County. And these programs provide practical, everyday skills that will benefit students for the rest of their life, whether they go in that or not. I want to take a minute to kind of uh, talk a little bit about some partnerships that we have. One partnership that I'd like to point out today is, is uh, Garber Auto Mall. Garber Auto Mall, the Automotive Academy at Middleburg High School. Okay, Garber invested over $200,000 to upgrade the shop. Also have given vehicles and equipment. They're even working on electric vehicles in Middleburg High School. Okay, who would have who fucked it, right? Okay. Uh, it, it's just one example of how Clay County schools can reach the needs of the community for workforce development. It's a fantastic program. Students get uh, advanced manufacturer specific industry credentials. Right. A lot of times, students want a high paying job. Let me tell you, those of you that had your car repaired, <laughs> they, they make some good money. Right. So. so I think I saw them here. Zach Moore and Mike Weiner, can you hear? Okay, from Garber. Fantastic partners. The second partnership that I wanted to kind of point out in Career and Tech Ed is our firefighter program that's going into Arch Park High School next year. Okay? Uh, as Clay grows, um, we have greater need for firefighters, and Clay County Schools is trying to meet that need. So we're starting new firefighter program at Arch Park High School. Students can take Firefighter 1, 2, uh, and 3. They can take the track of Nursing Assistant, uh, EMR, Emergency Medical Responder, or Firefighter. You know, I just said, uh, um, you know, I have tremendous respect for all of our first responders. Uh, I'm extremely proud. Uh, my son is a firefighter, so this kind of hits home, hits home for me. And uh, I'd also mention in the area of first responders, the Criminal Justice Academy at Clay High School is uh, a nationally recognized program there. So, so one of the things that we try to do is to meet the needs of the community. Right? Schools don't operate in isolation. It takes three groups for us to be successful. Yeah, it takes people in the system, right? The teachers, everybody else that you're commonly think of. It takes parents, right? But it also takes the community at large. And so we're very proud of that. We have Captain Billy Futch. Captain Futch, if you'd stand up, recognize Clay County Project. And some of the other business partners, of course, the danger of kind of naming some of them. Sometimes they're here, they're not here, and they're all of that. But but by star, I see Michael over there from by star. I certainly see uh, I see Jeremy from uh, Clay County Utility Authority. Great internships for three of our students. You know they're going to get out making sixty grand. 
I made 18.3 when I got out. <laughs> and I used to make 60 grand, which is 80 in, in a couple of years from that. That's pretty good for a student getting out, of, getting out of high school. So we appreciate the partnership. Also, a lot of partnerships, I, I, many of you probably know, the healthcare industry has exploded mm. in Clay County. Okay. Great partnerships with Lisa uh, Valentine at ACA, Kevin Ranks, Darren Rourke, and the whole crew. We look to expand our CNA program from Fleming Island High School. It seemed natural to me that you could walk from Fleming Island High School to the hospital. We'd like to create a pipeline of nurses that could then work in Clay County and coordinate with, our, with St. John's River to deal with the education piece. Because we want kids to not only uh, be educated in Clay County, we want them to work in Clay County, and we want them to stay in Clay County. So that's a main mission uh, that I have. I don't community aid, you know, sometimes people don't have the, a traditional educational route, right? Those people are important too. They've done a great job at adult and community ed. You can see they have programs in paraprofessional, lobotomy, uh, phlebotomy, <laughs> not lobotomy. <laughs> <laughs> a 911 telecommunication program, there's something for everyone in their program. Ms. Ms. Rousseau does a great job up there. We instituted an early literacy team. Most people don't realize that, that uh, early literacy is a passion of mine. I remember when my kids were young and getting kids to read at an early age. So important. After the pandemic, we saw a strong need for early literacy. I'll just tell you that. Uh, while we rank in the top 10 in the state, in this area, no one can deny that the ability to read is paramount to a student's education. It just is, okay? There's something magical when a student moves from learning to read to reading to learn. I mean, think about it. A young kid's just learning to read. That's all they know is they want to read. But after you learn to read, that's when everything else becomes so apparent to you, right? Because then you go from learning to read to read and learn. And I got a quiz for you. If you take a three, four, five, even six-year-old Put them on a chair with a book and then walk away from him or her. Okay? What happens? Nothing. They will never learn to read. You can hand them that book, they can sit there forever. They will never read. Reading is an interactive process, it requires people to actually do it. It's a process, right? A kid can sit there with a book all he wants or she wants until an adult interacts with the child. That's the only time that learning will occur, right? So what does that mean? We need great readings, reading teachers, of course, and we also need parents to read, read to their children, right? So it's an important skill. And there's a lot of science that says if you can't read by, by third grade, right? that's why third grade is that magic cutoff. Right? Because the odds on that child uh, become tough to overcome. Not impossible, but tough statistically to overcome. You know, reading really uh, has eight parts to it. And if you look at reading, it's almost like a rope. And these eight parts are intertwined. And when the eight parts are all intertwined just right, it's kind of a strong rope, right? But if you're missing any piece of rope, it, it's not as strong. So then what we do is we look at those eight parts of reading, attempt to diagnose what part needs remediation, and then you tailor instruction for that. So this way, uh, the reading rope, if you want to call it that, is strong. Right? That's the whole purpose to it, is to use interventions to address deficiencies. OK, we had a great, this was a great event. We were celebrating literacy. We should celebrate reading. We really should, and I enjoyed that. Uh, I, I've said this before, most people are amazed by this. If you were to add up the amount of time that schools have students versus the number of time that they're not with us, the ratio is 86 to 14. So if you take the number of hours in a year, whatever that number is, 24 times 365, whatever that number is, and then you took 180 days of school by seven hours, added that up, <coughs> Okay, and then you did the math, 
<laughs> Students are with us 14% of the hours in a year. They're with their parents or, uh, or guardians 86% of the time. Okay? We need help. Okay? I, I know this. That means for 14% of the time, we're going to maximize our time. We don't have a lot of time. And then the other part of that is we need to engage with the community. We need to engage with our parents in order to make that happen. And that's what that kind of reminded me of when I was at that event uh, that night. I was like, my goodness, we need to engage more. I'm going to go through these quick, but uh, exceptional student education. You know, there's 14 different ESE eligibility categories ranging from autism spectrum disorder to visual impairment in Clay County Schools. For those of you that haven't been out to see one of our special needs programs, you really should. You really should. You'd be so impressed with the caring nature of the adults in there under very difficult circumstances. You know, they say a society is only as strong as how it treats its most vulnerable. I'll just say right now, I'm proud of the work that's done by our ESE department. In fact, I think we're a victim of our own success because when you're uh, when you're moving into Jacksonville, if you're in the, in the military and you have a special needs child, they actually tell you to go live in Clay County, right? And then we wonder why our numbers are so high, right? Why they have no well, I have to wonder, okay? Now, is it difficult to raise a child with special needs? Well, I haven't done that, but yeah. Isn't it difficult to raise any child, right? And then you have on that the additional the additional burdens that might be there. How about this little factoid? We have 91.5% of our students with disability graduate and graduate on time. Way above. <laughs> this year we formed an ESE Advisory Council. You see the little flyer up there, or maybe you can't. The ESE Advisory Council is to reach out to the community. Okay, we meet uh, every month. I, I, I'm thankful to, for Dr. Sanders to, to open up to people because so many times there's confusion that occurs between an individualized education plan, the needs of the student, the wants of the parent. There's a lot of that that happens. So it's very important that we reach out to our to our community, to our ESE. I think I saw Liz Williams. Liz, are you in here? Okay, our parent liaison. Uh, to help parents and guide parents. Somebody has to advocate for parents, and I don't mind the the um, the back and forth that goes with that, because that only makes us better. Okay, and so I appreciate the work that she does pushing back on us in the districts that we provide the services that we should. Now, okay, let me tell you something. Okay, I know everybody's interested, like all right, okay, athletics. Let's talk about this. I put this up here for a reason because one, schools have to provide more than just the coursework. When I think back in my school days, I was more interested in playing football, wrestling. Um, I actually even tried basketball. That was terrible, but I tried. Okay. So my point is, students that participate in something beyond the regular school day whether it's band, whether it's chorus, whether it's the fine arts, whatever they're interested in, they excel more statistically in school. They feel like school is a part of their life. You know, I don't think you see anybody running around saying, yeah, I love geometry, right? And put on uniforms and, no, life doesn't work that way, right? So why wouldn't we kind of accentuate the things that gets kids interested in school? And one of those is athletics. This past year, we hired a, a coordinator, a district coordinator of athletics, very proud of this fact, John Scromolo. Many of you know John. He's out here somewhere doing a great job leading that work. Our goal is simple. It's to create outstanding student-athlete experience. Okay, an outstanding student-athlete experience. Okay, our students that participate in athletics, and there's 6,000 of them, a 3.37 GPA. Okay, because I don't know about you. But I was afraid of my coach. <laughs> I did my work when I was in season. Anyway, okay. That season was another story, right? So, so very proud of the work that's being done there and the safety aspect of that. All of them are trained in uh, CPR, AED, first aid certified. 
all the time to be uh, able to respond to an emergency should one occur. Now talking about developing teachers, there is no doubt I might get an amen on this one. Being a, te being a teacher now is more difficult than it's ever been. I don't even get it. Teachers sleeping in the back. Okay? Let me just say this: it's also never been more important than it is now. Okay, so let me encourage you. While I recognize how difficult the situation is, never forget the impact you make. Never forget that. Okay. Let me let me kind of point out some things that we're doing relative to teacher supports. Teachers are not coming from college of education programs. Like I was actually, I actually went to college as a teacher. I did internships, I did the whole nine yards, okay? Most teachers now, about 75% of teachers, don't have those experiences. So you can't just give somebody a set of keys and say, hey, go for it. You know, good luck, hope it works out, right? You can't do that. So we, we have a whole system by which we want to go ahead and provide support for teachers because we realize how difficult the job is. Okay? We have professional learning communities for, for teachers. We have expanded professional development for them. We have Teacher Leadership Academy. We even have a position called a teacher support coach. Right? We want to support our teachers. We want our teachers to feel like working in Clay County is a great place to work. Right? To do that, you have to do a variety of things. You have to provide supports at the school level, right? And you have to provide supports at, from the district level also. There's one program that we have that I feature at the bottom. It's Project Prep with, with UNF. We have some UNF folks back there. We appreciate the partnership. Largest grant ever, I believe, for the, uni for the university. They partnered, they didn't partner with Duval. No. They didn't partner with St. John's. No, they partnered in part. Well, we have uh, Dr. Rebecca Burns. Okay, please stand up to be recognized. Thank you so much. Okay, so supporting teachers. Now, financial accomplishments. Craig County Schools has maintained a 5% fund balance, an A-bond rating, okay? No one gets into education for the money, right? Because you didn't figure that out. Nobody's in here for the money. But I will tell you that I'm proud that through fiscally conservative practice, we were able to make great strides in the area of compensation for our teachers. We're thankful to the legislatures, the TSIA money. Clay County added to that. We went on top of that because we felt like we should do that as an organization. The starting teacher salary for a teacher now in Clay County is $48,250. I won't say anything, but when I started, it was eighteen three. <laughs> I thought I was rich. Thing, right? And I see many of the, uh, the older faculty back there saying the same thing. Eighteen three. I will say we were stuck at 38 for probably like a 10 year period. And if it wasn't for the legislature and the governor throwing in the TSIA money, uh, we, we probably wouldn't have been able to push forward in that direction. What we ask for now is for the ability to compensate our veteran teachers. Those people that are in uh, step 14 or above, because what happens is if you throw all the money towards the beginning of the salary schedule, the people that are right in Clay County, it's around year 14-ish, Right there, it's kind of like they're getting paid almost the same as somebody that just started, and that's very uh, disheartening to educators. And so I see Senator Bradley out there shaking her head, so I'm going to hold her to it, which is, hey, we want, we just want flexibility in the law. We want the, the ability. To now I always hear people when they get frustrated with, with the school board and, and over money, they'll say, we need an audit. You guys need to be audited. 
Well, there's good news. We're audited every year. Okay? You can see them. They're on the website. We can point you to it. Okay. It's not like this is a magic thing. And I will tell you this: uh, we're not only recognized for being academically high performing, but fiscally high performing also. I'll give a shout out now to Dr. Lugatka. Where is she? <laughs> I'll also tell you that Dr. Lebecco's name, nickname is Dr. No. <laughs> as soon as you ask for something, her answer is no. Can we get this? No. It just starts that way. Then you work your way out. Okay. So I also want to point out we have an award winning um, uh, health program, on site clinics, free clinics for, for individuals. Four time platinum award winner. We're self funded for the first time. In our financial history, that will provide more flexibility financially for the district uh, down the road, we believe. We're excited about that. I'm going to move on to climate and culture. Some of the things that we're focusing on now are focusing on attendance, increasing attendance. After the pandemic, you know, people started to have a more laissez-faire attitude, which everybody sees that. It's kind of like, oh, I don't need to go. Just send me the Google link. <laughs> right. Why do I I'll phone it in? I work from home, right? All of that stuff. But we put a heavy focus on attendance. I'm proud to say there's a four percent increase in attendance. You see it plastered everywhere. Every newsletter has reminding parents. Okay, got to send your school, your kid to school. You got to be in it to win it. We also came out of the pandemic with an increased need for student behavior. I, I, I don't know if it's. Uh, because of social isolation, if it's because of social media, uh, whatever the, the cause is, we've seen an increase of student mis misbehavior. So we wanted to increase our, uh, our discipline procedures. We have now have deans in all of our secondary schools, as well as PBIS, which is simply, hey, we want to reward kids too that actually do the right thing and behave themselves. Mental health. Is another one of those issues that came out of the pandemic. We've seen a tremendous increase in students needing mental mental health services. We implemented the Brave referral system. Is uh, is Lindsay here? Okay, yeah. Lindsay's over here. Lindsay for Project Brave. Seventeen thousand or seventeen hundred referrals for services. What what we see happening is students needing services, but us not being able to connect. The services to the people that need the services. That's what her organization does. I'm so thankful for your partnership. Thank you, uh, Lindsay. Appreciate that. Also wanted to kind of point out we have community partnership schools. Okay, this was started back back in the day from former Senator uh, Bradley's credited uh, for that. The legislature we have with us Tina Breaker and and Sean um, Smith, Keystone, Wilkinson Junior High, Orange Park High School. All community partnership schools giving wraparound services for students and those that need it. We also have a Purple Star School. You know, military families so important. Sometimes it's difficult when when uh, family members are put on deployment. Schools should provide resources for that. We have family military life counselors, and you can tell that my pace has picked up quite a bit. <laughs> so I'll, try to get you, I'll try to get you out as soon as I can, but also highlight some things. Right now, we have over uh, $65 million worth of projects that are going on right now in Clay County Schools. That picture that you see there, that's Keystone Heights Elementary School in the cafeteria. And we have the man that's building it right there, Dominic Scorpio. Scorpio. Thank you. We also have a brand new school, uh, Spring Park Elementary, out there on 315, which will open in, in August. Of 2023. Total cost of that building is 40 million. Mm -hmm. Things aren't cheap anymore. <laughs> yeah. Want to highlight some other departments? <coughs> Transportation. Yeah. <laughs> Transportation. We we started the year with 22 double backs. We're down to one. Transportation might stack the deck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got excited as soon as I got the transportation. Let me just say this there's 1,900 bus driver open vacancies in the state of Florida right now. In Clay County, we have every single route covered. 
okay? We do have one double back. The double back is, hey, you go out, you pick up the kids, you bring them to the school, you go back out again for a second load and bring them back again. We started off the year with 22 of those. Are we where we should be? The answer is no. Are we doing better than most? The answer is yes, for sure. Food and nutrition services, they're just rock stars. You know, if you've ever been in charge of something, you had something that you didn't ever, ever have to worry about, you think, wow, that's great. For me, that's food services. I saw Susie over here, never a peep out of food services. How about this? The same lunch price as in 2019, right? Everything else went up in the world. Two dollars and fifty cents, you can get lunch in Clay County Schools. That's for that's for secondary. Two twenty-five in elementary. I guess we figured they eat a little less. <laughs> <laughs> so they do a fantastic job. School safety. Let me just tell you, there's no doubt that since uh, Stoneman Douglas, school safety has become on the top of everyone's list, and we understand that. We've had. We've added single points of entry to all 43 schools. You can see as soon as you walk in, it kind of looks like a bank teller type of scenario. It's unfortunate that we have to do that, but we have to protect our children. We continue to upgrade our camera system, security fencing, uh, classroom lockdown devices, impact film. We have a dedicated officer from our police department in every school. We also have guardians in some of our schools, so, so there's more than one person with, with a weapon. On that campus to protect those those uh, those children. I want to feature uh, our partnerships that we have here. I see Sheriff Cook out there. I think that's the safest road. There's <laughs> <laughs> four of them together in uniform. It's extremely impressive. I got to say from up here, uh, folks. Sheriff Cook, Chief Guzman, Chief Goebel, Chief Wagner. Thank you so much. For We, we had a reunification plan, but I think the sheriff, the sheriff bumped it up a notch on us, and we, we, we did what's called a Community Hazards Incident Response Plan, or a CHIRP, and I, and I forget what the original one was. Tactical Action Plan. Uh, you said no tactical. And, and we're educators. We don't like tactical things. <laughs> so we shy away from that one. We don't CHIRP, we decide. But we, we met with every school administration, trying to provide them a flexible plan. Because not all emergencies happen the way you think that they're going to happen. You gotta go ahead and provide a little bit of context. So thank you, Sheriff Doug, for, for your leadership there in, in protecting our kids. Information technology, is there any group that you're expected to work 100% of the time? <laughs> think how ridiculous that is, right? It's supposed to work every time. The second it doesn't work, you're blamed for everything. <laughs> right? The folks in technology know what I'm talking about. Okay, I will tell you, before this presentation, I must have said to Terry Dennis, I said, Did you, do you got two, two computers? Do you have two clickers? Do you have two copies of the presentation? Right? Because you never know. If the technology goes, you're, you're out of luck, right? And we become more dependent on it. And no group has had more pressure put on them in the pandemic. Then uh, IT, okay, how about that? 17 million Google Glasses. <laughs> okay. they, they do a fantastic job. All of those programs, just look at the number of times that kids and families get onto those programs. And it has to work every time. Every time, it's a zero fail. Otherwise people then blame it for everything. And it doesn't work. Okay, human resources. Don't need to tell you that hiring teachers, a huge issue, there's a teacher shortage. In the state of Florida, there's a teacher shortage nationally. Proud to say that we had 90, 98% uh, of our classrooms filled with certified teachers on day one in Clay County. That's, that's better than most across the state. We're proud of that fact. In general, Clay County uh, retains his employees. We have a 90% retention rate. The state retention rate is uh, 85, so 5% 5, 5 above the state average. So in general, do teachers leave Clay County? Of course they do, okay? We hire about 370 a year. That's historical. I was in HR prior to this gig, 
And I can tell you, it's been about that amount uh, each, each and every year. People move, people do things. What I'm most proud of is in probably the most difficult times that we've ever experienced, we're still able to have a decent retention rate uh, of our employees, even though all of the, uh, the, the world around us is the way that it is, okay? So very proud of human resources. I want to take a moment to recognize the school board, okay? You know, it takes a team of people. One of the things I'm proud of is that uh, we act together as a team, we act together as one. And our mission should always be students, right? We, the public looks to us and, and the way that we treat one another and the focus that we have. They make judgments about our work. They really do. I've been around a long time, so I've worked with a lot of I've worked with a lot of folks over those years, and I always appreciate a board that wants to work together, work with the superintendent. The mission is always children, so I'm very I'm very thankful for the board. Let's give the board a big round. So now I'm moving fast. Okay, five year strategic plan. Okay, we're in the midst of a new one. We've done all kinds of things. We've got out. We've had community meetings. We've had teacher advisory council meetings on this. We've gathered data from surveys. We're doing all of that stuff, trying to get to the point where we form a new strategic plan. You can see the five building blocks of what we're attempting to do. We've kind of narrowed our goals into five areas. Student success, talent, recruitment, development, family and community engagement, safe and positive learning environment, fiscal and operational efficiency. Those are the five goals. We'll have a new strategic plan. Hopefully, God willing, by June, the board will vote on that, and we'll all be we'll all be happy with that. I would be remiss if I didn't talk about growth, and so I'm going to give you my best three or four minutes on, on growth. Okay, no doubt, Clay County, uh, Clay County itself is booming. I mean, currently have 42 schools. We're projected at 49 in the next 10 years. So that's, that's a good number of schools to be built. 25,000 homes is, is the projection, 10,000 students. So if you want to see it like in a slide, there you go. That's adding a quarter of your population, a quarter of the students on there. Um, you know, and, and whether you like growth or not, it's here. And, and so we best make the, the most of it. So, I know that that looks like Monopoly houses. <laughs> That's Clay County. You've got to see well, all the growth. The Lake Asbury area, those of you in Lake Asbury know that's, that's an exploding area out in, out in Lake, Lake Asbury. I also want to point out to you that growth is kind of like, uh, it's kind of like predicting hurricanes. I hate to use this analogy, but it's a good one. Okay? When you have a hurricane and you're like days out, they give you the cone of uncertainty. <laughs> right? And if you notice the cone gets wider the more time goes out. Well, growth and growth management works the same way. Right? Right now, you know what's happening right now because you're so close to it time-wise. As time goes on, it's harder to predict how that's going to all plan. How do I know that? Spring Park Elementary School was originally slated by the school board to be built in 2009. Or Mr. Worthen became superintendent and he caught me, just went down, down, down the tubes, right? And, and that school was not built until, until now, right? So, so if you think of it that way, we know what's happening now. And it's easier to predict like the next couple of years. But if you look at it, the cone gets wider as time moves further on. But with that in mind, I don't want you to hold, hold me to this. We're looking to build all the schools that you see on the screen. They're all in our educational facilities plan. Uh, school AA, which is Saratoga Springs, a K-8 school for $75 million, which would be the estimated cost of that school. Okay. Then we have school RRR, which would be our next high school in Saratoga Springs. A new high school, which is a rough estimate for new high schools, $120 million to build a new high school. That's, that's off of the cost that St. John's currently is paying, paying for their in high school, if you wonder, like, where'd you come up with that number? Right. There are other schools being built now. That's another number to pay. 
ordinance. And then you also see uh, Governor's Park and Saratoga Springs. There's the, I do like the logo, the house, the symbol of wisdom, right there, okay? Organizational next steps, and I promise we're almost right to the end. Organizational next steps, we're going to continue to expand our choice options. We're going to continue to, to expand our, our, our pipeline of teachers. We have district accreditation coming in the next year. We want to continue our, our workforce development. You know, there's, there's many other areas to focus on. A lot going on, and I realize I kind of ran short on time, and then I condensed it all on because we have to be out of here at this time. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you tonight for coming. I want to thank you for your support of Clay County Schools. To all the employees of Clay County Schools, what you do is important. Don't you ever forget that, okay? And for the community, thank you for your support. Everybody have a great evening.